Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras, and coming up in today's newscast, Israeli President Reuben Rivlin makes a decision. Prime Minister Netanyahu is tasked with the first attempt at forming a coalition. Meanwhile, as classrooms in Israel slowly reopen from COVID lockdowns, the first group of foreign students arrive. And finally, a glimpse at the future with flying cars by Urban Aeronautics. Now, before the big election day news, the start we start today, unfortunately, with an alleged attempted car ramming. IDF soldiers in the West Bank shooting and killing the Palestinian suspect in early morning hours of Tuesday and injuring his wife. The incident occurring just northeast of Jerusalem near the town of Bir Nabala. Israeli soldiers setting up a checkpoint roadblock to enable other forces in the area to operate uninterrupted. But according to the IDF sources, the alleged suspect's car initially stopped at the checkpoint before suddenly accelerating towards another group of soldiers in the area, quote, in a way that endangered the lives of the soldiers. And it was at this time that those troops opened fire. There has been a sharp uptick in anti-Israel violence in the area in recent weeks, including fire bombings and rock throwing along the highways, targeting vehicles with Israeli license plates. The alleged suspect's wife, however, rejecting this narrative outright, claiming to have been attacked unprovoked when only out to run an errand. Investigations are ongoing. All right, now the day has come. Israeli President Reuven Rivlin completing his conferences with the various Knesset parties in hopes of finding anyone capable of cobbling together a coalition and preventing a fifth repeat election. קיבלתי את הכרעתי בהתאם למשתקף ממפת הממליצים, המידע על סיכוי גבוה מעט של חבר הכנסת בנימין נתניהו להרכיב ממשלה. לפיכך החלטתי להטיל עליו את התפקיד להרכבת הממשלה. Israeli President Reuven Rivlin finally finishing his last party consultations ahead of the official swearing-in of the 24th Knesset or Parliament. And the first mandate or chance to put together a government will go to incumbent Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. But it's anyone's guess whether a governing coalition can actually be put together or if fifth serial elections will be called, especially after the first day's consultations yielded disconcerting results, to say the least. The political deadlock continuing relatively unchanged, with nobody getting a clear majority. Rivlin, in his speech, even lamenting Netanyahu's low chances of success, but saying that he is obliged by law to at least give him the chance. At the end of consultations, Prime Minister Netanyahu was receiving 52 votes, while opposition leader Yair Lapid receiving 45. Nafali Bennett of the Yamina party, meanwhile, getting seven seats from his own party, and the New Hope under Gideon Saar, the Joint Arab List under Ayman Ode, and Ram under Mansour Abbas, refusing to officially support anyone. So Netanyahu will now have 28 days with a possible two-week extension from Rivlin to form a government. And if at the end of this term no coalition is built, the president will have the option of tasking someone else with the mandate to try. If both chances fail, it's back to the polls this summer. Now, there is a lot of talk about why our government is so divided and unwilling, if not incapable, of coming together. But one possible explanation for both our ongoing political gridlock as well as for the allegedly rising rate of government corruption has been suggested. The Lebanonization of Israel. And with us to explain this term is the author of the theory himself, Middle East expert and lecturer at Bar Ilan University, Mordechai Kedar. Thank you so much for being with us. Now, first off, what do you mean by the Lebanonization of Israel? Well, whoever is aware of the process which uh, Lebanon went through uh, cannot ignore the similarities between what happened there and what happens in Israel with the changes or with the differences. 
Uh, first of all, uh, what happened in Lebanon is that politicians preferred uh, to make uh, um, a personal uh, accounts between each other and factional accounts and all kinds of things which were not in the good interest of the state of the state. And and after the day, uh, each and every one of them wanted to get support from the Islamic movement, means Hezbollah in Lebanon. And this is how Hezbollah became legitimate uh, a player in the political game already 15 or 16 years ago. Well, well the majority the of, of Lebanon's parliament, as I understand it, is sectarian and, and religious-based. Is that is that correct? Yes, but the fact that everyone resorted to Hezbollah mm -hmm. to get some support made Hezbollah actually a legitimate player in this game. Mm -hmm. Although Hezbollah is a terror organization, as everybody knows. Uh, here in Israel, there are similarities to what we saw in Lebanon. Here we are also divided on personal issues and factional issues and political issues, and politicians cannot get their act together, so they try to base themselves on the Islamic movement. And the Islamic movement, I, I don't say that they are a, a terror organization, speaking about but Ram. they are part of the Talking about Ram. Hmm. Uh, Ram is the Israeli chapter of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, worldwide organization, uh, which actually bred uh, all the terror organizations which uh, belong to the Sunni side of Islam, like Hamas, Al Qaeda, uh, ISIS, and many others, who are the descendants of the Muslim Brotherhood ideology. And the same is uh, uh, the, the Islamic movement in Israel means the party of Ram. Of course, they are not a terror organization, but definitely they support the uh, jihad against any state which is not an Islamic state, just like Israel. And they don't see any reason for having a Jewish state here in, altogether, where, even if it wasn't a, a, centimeter, a square centimeter on the seashore of Tel Aviv. Well, so, so, why well, so how do you respond then? Because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to apologize or, or excuse previous ideologies espoused by Mansour Abbas or the Ram Party, and, and certainly not the Muslim Brotherhood. But recently, Ram and Mansour Abbas has been viewed as a much more pragmatic potential partner. He had a speech uh, just last weekend where he discussed coming together with Jews and Arabs and everybody else who who was in Israel. So, is it possible that? Th that they're that they really are more pragmatic that they really are coming more towards the center and becoming a little bit more uh, uh, you could say moderate no they have the same goal as the radical part of the Islamic movement the Sheikh Raid Salah the North uh, uh, party as or the Northern faction uh, as they call it but however they try to deceive the Jewish population here in Israel to think that they are moderate, that they accept the state of Israel. And this is another kind of uh, behavior of Islamic movements. It's called in Arabic takia. Takia means deception. Uh, they behave as if. How do I know? Um, in, in Hebrew, he says different things compared to what he says in Arabic to his audience. And uh, this is uh, just like Tariq Ramadan in Europe and many others of the Muslim Brotherhood. And this is why I, since I speak Arabic and I understand Arabic, I see the differences between what he says in Hebrew and what he says in Arabic. And this is why I don't believe them that they accept Israel as a Jewish state. And as long as they uh, don't accept Israel as a Jewish state, I'm not sure that, uh, that it is uh, correct. What, what is the solution to prevent the so-called Lebanonization of Israel? First of all, the, the uh, parties, especially those who belong to the right, and they are the majority of the Knesset, because if you take the Likud and the religious ones and the Saar and, uh, and, 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 and Lieberman, they can have a majority of almost 80 Knesset members with the Haredim and, and, and the religious ones. But since they don't get their act together, uh, uh, they need to base on the Islamic movement. And this is the problem. They cannot speak to each other or don't want to sit with each other. Hmm. All right, well, so it sounds like the solution, as in most things, is to openly communicate and actually collaborate and cooperate. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, Mordechai Kadal.
Thank you so much. Moving on, if you have an account with Facebook or one of its subsidiaries, it is past time to change your password. Matter of fact, change all of your passwords everywhere while you're at it, and make sure that at least your email password is different. Because 533 million users of the social media giant's platform across 106 countries have had their phone numbers and other personal data leaked, and this including 4 million Israelis. Now, the leak was originally detected in January by Israeli cyber specialist Alon Gal, CTO of cybercrime intelligence firm Hudson Rock. And via a Telegram bot, people were permitted to scan the database for a low nominal fee. But the full list of 533 million names now re-uploaded to a low-level hacking forum for free. Gal taking to Twitter then to again blast Facebook for its lack of culpability or remorse adding that bad actors will certainly use the information for social engineering, scamming, hacking, and marketing. So again, change your passwords and beware of unknown links or offers of cash and gifts online. It is very likely a scam. Now, as COVID rates continue dropping and life returns to some broad form of normal, new students are arriving from abroad to study here in Israel for the first time in what feels like forever. So Manuel Kadosh went to Ben Gurion Airport to welcome the first flight to arrive. Since 1972, Jewish National Fund's USA's Alexander Muss High School in Israel has stood out as one of the premier Israeli academic institutions for students studying abroad. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 lockdown restrictions, JNF was forced to suspend its spring semester for the first time in the school's history until today. JNF, in collaboration with Alal Airlines, is one of the first Israeli organizations to receive approval from the Israeli government to bring over 240 students to live and study here in Israel for the first time in 2021. So this is the Alexander Muss High School in Israel program of Jewish National Fund United States where we are bringing teens from around the world, predominantly at the moment from the United States, but it's become a global program. And they're coming from everywhere to Israel to continue the academic studies at the highest level and at the same time soak in Zionism and the love for Israel and their heritage. This last year was uh, much anticipation and a lot of hard work on behalf of a lot of people. Sometimes the Jewish people know how to all work together. So uh, this was a great opportunity where the hero is Zohar Vlotsky, who's a Kakal emissary working with JNF. And it's a great example of when all the different organizations start to work together. Having them come, there's no incoming planes. People cannot come to Israel yet from abroad, but everyone came together, all these partners gathered, so we could bring them all here today, and we succeeded. So this is the first of many more to come. We've got a marvelous campus in Hoda Sharon. Uh, we have four dormitories that have been prepared for months for the kids to arrive. They've been uh, on their way since January. And we've got teachers and general studies teachers and a whole team of faculty that are ready to show them Israel. They will be here uh, for a semester and uh, they will study here, uh, uh, Israel studies and general studies. And uh, they will uh, not only will be at the classes, they will go all over Israel because our real classes is Israel. So uh, we are uh, going to uh, travel and to learn about around 4,000 years of uh, Jewish history and Jewish identity. I've been waiting months to do this program, but I'm just so excited to meet new people and make new relationships and also just explore Israel and travel the entire country. So I'm really excited to be with the class. This is the trip we've been waiting for our entire high school and elementary school. Um, I've been at this school since kindergarten and it's a huge experience for everyone to go on the HSI trip senior year. Um, I'm excited to, to hike and go to the beach and to do group bonding activities. It's something we've been waiting for a while, and now that we're finally here, it's, it's a little bit surreal, but we're excited. Everybody put your hands in the air, like you okay. Woo! Welcome to Israel! All right, now my next guest made Aliyah, or immigrated to Israel from California, and has made a name for herself as one of Israel's top English-speaking social media influencers. Please welcome TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube star Marissa Brower. Marissa, thank you so much for being with us. Now, your content largely tries to reflect what it's like to be in Olah Hadasha, or a new immigrant, uh, and the process of integration into, into a new culture and society. What kind of feedback do you usually get? You know, how are people responding? Well, thank you so much for having me, first of all. Um, I kind of get a mix of feedback. Firstly, I have my 
Israeli audience and then I also have an American audience and from my American audience I would say that there are people who are you know like thinking about the idea of making Aliyah or a curiosity with Israel or they have a connection with Israel like they have a partner who's Israeli or maybe they're Israeli themselves and immigrated to the US um, and then my Israeli audience just wants to know what it's like for an Ola Hadasha or an American to be in Israel and you know find their way not as someone who's not so gifted in Hebrew like myself so um, yeah that's kind of like the mixed reactions that I get from my viewers do you have like do you have like a lot of trouble navigating the the Israeli bureaucracy yeah. and the red tape here <laughs> unfortunately I do um, I kind of just fake it till I make it you know and I also bring my boyfriend with me everywhere to translate so I mean that's my that's how I you know I mean figured that, out Israel basically I mean that that sounds like a very Israeli thing to do at the end of the day you think? <laughs> I do, yeah, absolutely. You, you well, know, thank you. If you don't know, you bring somebody who does. That's that's the most Israeli thing. Right, exactly. But, so going back to your content, though, you know, how do you decide what you're what you're going to do next? You know, what what about living in Israel inspires your content? Right. So, you know, I made a list of video ideas. I think every YouTuber makes a list of video ideas, so they have their week ready, but I never follow it. Like, I think last week I wanted to make Hala and I didn't. I just, what did I do last week? I think I was on Omegle or something like that. I, I was trying Passover food. Whatever inspires me at the time, or I get, sometimes even like a viewer will message me, hey, can you do this? And I think it's a great idea, so I'll do it. Um, so I try to be organized, but it never really works for me. I just get inspiration from everyday life. Just like it was Passover last week, so I made a Passover related video. So, all right, now we talked a little bit about your demographic, and, and it was actually quite interesting to us to find out that it's not what we expected. It's overwhelmingly Israeli across, across all platforms. I mean, I think it's something about 80, 80 to 90 percent. So are you surprised right. by this, or did you expect more English speakers? Um, I think originally I expected there to be more English speakers just because I am speaking in English but I do understand now the attraction for Israelis to come to my channel I think that they enjoy hearing uh, an outsider's perspective they want to hear what Israel is like for an American because they don't have that privilege to know what Hebrew sounds like you know We're, you know I think as an English speaker I don't even know what English sounds like for an Israeli to know what someone who has no idea what Hebrew sounds like or anything about I, I really knew nothing about Israel before you know for Four years ago, so someone who has a really fresh perspective on Israel, I think they enjoy seeing um, that newcomers, you know, what they have to say about about their country. And then, well, so and I understand that you have an upcoming collaboration with Noah Kirel. Actually, Noah Kirel released a new collection with Terminal X yesterday, and she did this campaign. And they had, I think, around like 10 or 11 TikTokers participating in the campaign. There was like a little runway and everything. So yeah, I got to be a part of that. It was a amazing experience. I learned so much Hebrew because they only talked to Hebrew that whole day. But no, it was amazing. It's on uh, her YouTube channel. All right. So I guess what's next? You know, what are you, what are you planning next? What's the next video that's going to come out? Uh, maybe maybe give a little bit of promo. Right, so I'm doing a trying Israeli makeup brands video next. I'm probably going to film it this week. Um, and it was just an idea that I came up with yesterday. So um, that's the next thing on my YouTube channel. And my TikToks are really just, you know, spur of the moment, whatever comes to my mind. So that's what's upcoming for me. All right, well, I... As somebody who's on TV, wear a lot more makeup than I thought I was ever going to wear a couple of years ago. So I'll be <laughs> sure to watch. Marissa, thank you so much for okay. being with us. Thank you for having me. All right. Finally, the future of urban air mobility is here. With cities around the world at their max for congestion, Israeli aviation company Urban Aeronautics is taking to the air, providing the ultimate solution for saving time and even lives. This self-proclaimed car-sized aircraft offering safe and quick transport with the ability to navigate and land in locations that no other passenger aircraft has ever been capable of until now. What if cars could fly? Thanks to the leading Israeli aviation company, Urban Aeronautics, flying cars are about to become a reality. It is a car-sized urban aircraft that may revolutionize the future of air mobility in a safe, quiet, sustainable, and profitable way. The ILTV team had to go and see the City Hawk with their own eyes. 
Haran Ben Eliyahu, the Vice President of Business Development of Urban Aeronautics, took us on a tour to give us a deeper insight of this incredible invention. This is actually the first prototype that the, our founder, Dr. Raffaelli, built in Tel Aviv in his apartment in 2002. And then he took it out and proved that the technology actually works. That's why he named the company Urban Aeronautics, because he built a thing that could fly people around cities, in and out, uh, from rooftop to rooftop. We manufacture everything ourselves. You can see some of the components are from carbon fiber. This is very strong and very light. You can feel for yourself. We also manufacture the blades, which is a very unique. There's only a handful of companies that can create this kind of product. You can see our actually flying prototype, which is a one-ton vehicle with a, a jet engine and two ducted fans, and already flew 300 test flights here in Israel. This is just 80% uh, of the size of the actual product. The, the City Hawk, which we envision to be the air taxi, is gonna be 20% uh, bigger. And to tell us more about their vision of aviation transportation is the CEO, Nimrod Golan Yanai. Urban Aeronautics' vision is to lead the um, new future of urban air mobility. The City Hawk revolution is going to be introduced to the public in phases. Probably the first use cases are going to be EMS, emergency medical services, where you can access an, a car accident or any other incident in minutes then to be followed up with airport shuttle. For example, taking off from JFK to Manhattan, then to be followed with air taxi, full-scale utilization, you know, for the public mobility as a service. City Hawk is equipped with groundbreaking internal rotor fan craft technology. When you have an aircraft that has no external rotors, then suddenly you can introduce aviation into the urban environment. This state-of-the-art technology brings the dream of air mobility to everyone and everywhere. When we develop the City Hawk, we do not aim for, you know, just the rich people. We aim for all of us to use it. So it's gonna be pretty much the same cost as taking an Uber all the way from JFK to Manhattan. And topping it off, Urban Aeronautics uses eVTOL twin engines, and future eVTOL models of City Hawk will run on hydrogen, known to be a completely sustainable power source. We're going to be the first eVTOL in the world that is going to use hydrogen fuel cell to fly. The Israeli-based aviation company, in its first stage of manufacturing, now preparing to develop prototypes and is set to be ready for production in three to five years. We see a lot of movements around the financial markets towards eVTOL developers like ourselves. Now it's the perfect time to step into this domain. Thanks to Urban Aeronautics, the future is already taking off. Through the Investination platform, you can join the growth of Israel's up-and-coming startup technology. Investination is an investment platform developed by the Basadno Investment Group. Basadno affords its investors the opportunity to invest in some of the most promising startups. Visit investination.com to learn more. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast with Hannah Rifkin. Comfortable temperature lows this evening expected to be in the lower 60s or between 15 to 18 degrees Celsius. Then tomorrow, partly cloudy skies on the horizon and the ongoing heat wave breaking up in parts of the country with varying temperatures in the 80s and 90s or 20s and 30s in Celsius. Back to the studio. Thank you, Hana. And now, let's see what's going viral here in Israel. That is actually, that is actual footage of me at a buffet. All right, now that's it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.31 shekels to the American dollar and 2.64 shekels to the Canadian dollar. For more news from ILTV, please like ILTV on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to visit the all new and improved ILTV website at ILTV.tv and to subscribe to our newsletter for the latest updates while you're there. I'm Aaron Porras. Thank you so much for watching.